Hello everybody, welcome back to part two of this workshop where we are drawing realistically in charcoal. In part one, I went through the materials that I'll be using throughout this workshop, as well as some basic techniques that you'd need to know before we tackled any of the drawings. Now in this part, we're gonna start off fairly simple with just this flower study to get used to the techniques before getting into some harder references like the portrait and an animal study. If you wanna see how I created this drawing in real time, then it is available over on my Patreon along with over 300 other real time tutorials that you can access for just a small amount per month. For each real time tutorial, there will be the full narration and also all of the references, sketch outlines and materials list you need to follow along with the tutorials yourself. But if a monthly membership isn't right for you or you just want to focus on improving your charcoal drawing skills, then over on my website, I've got lots of different courses to help you master charcoal drawing. I've got a course on there for drawing portraits in charcoal, also drawing animals in charcoal and still life objects in charcoal. But if you really wanna improve your skills, you can get all three of those courses in my drawing bundle. And if you are interested in my courses you can get 15% off if you use the code save15 at checkout. So I really recommend checking out that drawing bundle and I'll leave a link to my course website and to my Patreon in the description below. So I am going to be drawing this flower study and one tip that I'd have for you guys if you are using charcoal and you're using a reference that is a coloured image, this one was originally in colour, is to make sure before you start your drawing that you turn your photo into a black and white image. It makes it a lot easier to judge your values. So I have already got the initial sketch outline down on my paper and the sketch outline as well as the reference will be available for you guys in the resources area of this workshop so you can follow along with me. Whenever I tackle a charcoal drawing, I always start off by blocking in the darkest areas first. I find that this helps me judge all of the other values if I've got the darkest ones placed in the right places to start off with. So if we look at this reference and pick out the darkest areas, we can see that most of the background is very, very dark, as well as some areas in the center of the flower and the stems. So those are the areas that I'm going to be shading in first. And for this part, I'll be using the 2B charcoal pencil. And if you did miss part one, then make sure you go and watch it where I do go through all of the materials that I'll be using. So let's start off with this pencil and start by blocking in the more detailed shadowed areas. I will be blocking in the background as well, but because this is a very large area, that is where I'm going to be using my charcoal block to do that instead to make it a lot faster. But to start off with, I'm just gonna be using the pencil to block in the darker shadows for the smaller areas. So we're leaving out the largest areas for the moment. Like I said, in the center of the flower, there is a lot of these little darker bits. I'm also gonna fill in the two stems, but I am gonna miss out this little part here because if you look at the reference, you can see that the value for this part is slightly lighter. So I'm not gonna directly add any charcoal to this part yet. And same with this stem, there's also a little bit of a lighter value here. So we're gonna miss that out as well. It's very important to look for the subtle value changes. And also you wanna make sure that you're keeping your pencils nice and sharp for this as we are getting in the details at the moment. Now that we've got in the stems, another area that we need to get in a lot of shadow within is this section here, this little bird up here. So mainly it is these little leafy bits that are coming off the central part. So it tends to be that the middle part is a little bit lighter and it's slightly darker around the edges. And remember, we wanna make sure that we're not applying any charcoal directly to any bright highlights, like I mentioned in part one. So for example, in the center of this flower part, there is this very bright highlight and we won't wanna get any direct charcoal to that area. Otherwise, when we use the eraser to try and lift it up, it won't be as bright as it could be. Now there's also a little bit of shadow around the edge here, you can see in the reference. So let's go ahead and fill in a bit of shading for those areas as well. Now that I'm happy that I've got in all of the darkest detail areas, it's time to get in the background. So like I said, for this, I'm going to be using the charcoal block because it makes it a lot faster to cover this large area. 
So in part one, I said it's important to hold it to the sides and place your finger on top to help get a bit of control. And I'm just gonna go and fill all of this in. Remember, you don't have to apply too much pressure. Just keep it nice and light because we will be blending all of this out. So don't worry if it looks grainy because it will look very smooth in the end. Also be careful, watch out for the edges. You don't wanna go over the flower petals. So if you get to an area like this, you can change your position on the charcoal block to make it easier to go around these areas. Or if that's still too difficult, then you can always go in with your pencil and just work your pencil around the edges. But you do wanna make sure that you're keeping a very clean defined edge around the petals because as you can see in the reference, it is a very harsh value change. For this step, you can either go side to side or work in circular motions. It's whatever is more comfortable for you. You can also see that just around the stem, there is a little bit of a lighter value. So I'm gonna miss out any of the lighter values for now. I'm not gonna shade them in with the charcoal block. So you can see that I'm switching over to the 2B pencil to fill in all of the outer edges by the flower petals and also by the stems and the bottom part of the stems as well. Now that I'm happy that I've got in all of the darkest shadows, I'm gonna switch over to my H charcoal pencil. So this is the lighter one, and it's also got a harder lead, which makes it great for details. And I'm gonna use this to block in the mid-tone values. For example, all of these little lines and veins within the flower petals and the shadows between the flower petals, and also some of those lighter shadows throughout the background as well. So let's start off with the flower petals. And you can see in the reference that a lot of these shadows are very soft and they're not harsh lines. So you don't wanna do any harsh lines. You want it to be very soft. You can also see that the value changes are very gradual. There's no intense, sudden, harsh value changes. You can see that it's a gradient between the different values. And that is because we can see the whole surface of this flower petal. There's only ever harsh changes when something overlaps. So that is why there was a harsh value change between the flower petal here and the background because the flower is overlapping the background. But where you can see the whole surface, it's just gonna be a very soft value change. For example, this petal is overlapping this one, so that shadow is gonna be a bit more of a harsher edge, whereas all of these little bumps and dips in the petal, because we can see the whole thing, they're just gonna be very soft transitions. Now within the flower petals, the darkest areas are the shadows between the petals and also this shadow here. And then there is lighter shadows throughout the petals going in lines. And you can see that these lines are curving with the petals. So for example, these are curving this way and then these are going straight down. So it's important to see which direction the flowers are curving in to make it look more realistic. So I'm gonna start off first by blocking in the darker shadows, which like I said, were the shadows in between the petals and also the shadow at the top of this petal here. And when you're doing this, you can go in circular motions or use the hatching method and go in lines that are going with the direction of the curvature of the petals. Even though I'm mainly using light pressure, if there is an area that you wanna get a little bit darker or a sharper detail, then you can apply a bit more pressure. Remember also to hold your pencil further back and to use the side of the pencil to help control your shading and make it more consistent and even. I also wanna fill in the whole of this center area because this is quite dark in value as well. So I'm lightly gonna shade in a bit of charcoal all over this center portion. And then I'm gonna apply a bit more pressure in certain areas and little dots to help darken up more areas and to also add more texture. I'm also just working around the petals as well and adding a little bit of shading because you can see in the reference that it is quite dark around the flower petals and then it does get a bit lighter but I do wanna add that little bit of shadow that's directly around the flower petals, just to add more contrast to the drawing. Now I'm starting to get in all of those shadows within the flower petals, all of those little veins in each petal, just by going in lines that are going with the curvature of that petal. And I'm being very light when I do this. 
There's no need to press too hard because we don't want any harsh outlines because remember the values are very soft. There's no harsh lines. So keep it very nice and light. And also these veins aren't very dark as well. So I'm going to leave it like that for now, but if we need to go in later and add in any more shadow, we can do. Now it's time to move on to the background and I'm going to look at all the areas that I've left white and just fill in any of the mid-tone areas within those sections and I'll just be leaving the brightest areas white. Again, to do this, it makes it a lot faster if you hold your pencil further back and to the side, it makes it easier to shade in the large areas faster. Now before I go in and blend everything out, I'm going to look around the reference again and look at my drawing and go back in with the 2B pencil and just go over any areas that I feel need to be a little bit darker. For example, the centre of the main flower I think can go a little bit darker. And I'm also going to darken up some edges around the flower petals. So that is it for our base layer of shading and now we need to go and blend this out. So the first thing that I always go in and do is use my brush to actually give it a once over and just blend everything out. So I'm going to go in with my brush and I'm going to use circular motions or when I'm doing the petals I'm going to be going with the curvature and with the veins that I drew with that direction and I'm just going to go and blend everything out. When you're using your brush you don't need to apply any pressure, just go in and dust over everything. You don't need to forcefully do it just blend over everything and don't worry if it's a bit grainy because we are going to be blending out with tissue and also our blending stumps and in some cases our fingers as well just to soften everything out. But I always find that using the brush first is a great way to add a base value across all of those areas that we've left white. For example on the petals even though there are some really bright highlights most of the petals have got some sort of grey value to them so using the brush really helps to actually darken everything up and add a nice base value by mixing in some of that charcoal powder from the darker areas into those areas we've left white. And using the brush also helps to soften out your values and make more of a gradual transition between values. It gets rid of some of that harshness and it gets rid of some of that graininess as well. Another thing that you can do is if you notice that one area of something like the petal needs to be a little bit darker, like for example, I know this whole section needs to go a little bit darker. One thing that you can do is pick up some charcoal from a darker area on your brush, like off the background, and use this to actually darken up any areas that you need to. So just pick up some of that charcoal and dust it over any areas that you need to darken up. Make sure that you don't pick up too much charcoal, otherwise you may get the area darker than you want it to be. But even if you do, this is very easy to erase. And you can see that I'm just going over the entirety of the background with the brush going in circular motions even over the white areas because we do want to add a bit of value to them too because if you look at the background, no areas of the background is actually white. Now to blend out the darkest areas some more, you can go in with your finger and go in circular motions and blend it out that way. I don't use my finger to blend lighter areas because you can run the risk of getting like smudged and oil fingerprints over your work and that's never good and it can give it a very messy look but on darker areas you don't really have to worry about that because they are very dark anyway. So I'm going to do that for the darkest areas of the background first and when you're doing this you will need to apply a little bit of pressure and really work your fingers in there in circular motions. But don't worry if the value for your background and your drawing isn't dark enough yet because this is just the base layer. We can darken everything up in a minute with a second layer of charcoal. And now I'm also going to go in with circular motions using a bit of tissue just to get rid of even more of that graininess on the lighter areas. Don't worry if you get a little bit of charcoal in an area you don't want it to be because you can always go in with a kneaded eraser and just lift it up like that. Now I also want to blend and soften out the areas within each of the petals a bit more. So I'm going to go in with a clean end of a blending stump and just go over the lines that I drew with the charcoal just to soften it out even more because we remember we want it to be soft values rather than being 
lines i don't want it to look like we've drawn it in lines i want it to be soft shadows very thin soft shadows and remember you don't want to go back and forth with your blending stump otherwise you'll get start and stop points like i showed you in part one instead you want to start at one end and feather it down to the other you can also use the blending stump to add in additional little lines and shadows by having a bit of charcoal on the blending stump and sweeping it across that petal and this will give you really natural looking veins and now that we've blended everything out the next step is to build up a second layer of charcoal by going in with the same pencils and just adding another layer especially on the background and on the stems we definitely need to darken up some areas I'm really happy with how the flower petals are looking. We don't have to do too much with them. We need to add a bit of shadow in between the petals and also darken up certain areas within the center of the flower. But really we don't need to do a lot more with the flower apart from add highlights, but we do need to work a lot on this bud down here. But now we've got a really nice base layer, which will make it a lot quicker to build up more shadows on top. Firstly, I'm starting off by using my charcoal block to add another layer to the background, to the darkest parts of the background, just like we did in the first layer, but we're just adding another layer on top. So again, I'm going in circular motions and making sure I hold my charcoal block on the sides and put a finger on top to help control where I'm shading. And I'm just filling in the darkest areas with this. I'm also going to go in and add this charcoal block by using the edge of the block to go in and shade in over the stem. Because the stem is really, really dark and this charcoal block is darker than the 2B pencil. Now I'm going to switch over to my 2B pencil because that is a bit lighter than the charcoal block and use this to shade in parts of the background that are a little bit lighter than the darkest value. Also, it is very important to study your reference image and actually identify what is the focal point of the drawing and is there anything that's blurred in the background. For example, we do have another flower here that is very blurred and out of focus and making sure that you get that blurry in your drawing makes it look like there's more depth in the drawing and therefore gives it more of a realistic look. Now I'm going to go straight in and blend out the background before we move on to the flower parts. So I'm going to go in first with my finger and blend out the darkest parts of the background. Once again, I'm going to go in with my tissue and just blend over those lighter areas to smooth everything out and to even out the values as well. Now I'm just looking around the background looking for the darkest shadows and I'm just going to add one final layer of the charcoal block to those sections and blend them out straight away. I'm also going to darken up the centre of the flower, go over these dark bits and I'm going to tap a bit more shadow throughout the centre of the flower just randomly, again to give it more depth and more texture. I'm also going to go in with the H pencil and use this to darken up the shadows in between the petals and to give more of a distinct edge. I'm also going over the shadows once more to make them as dark as they need to be. And I'm going to soften over these petals even more by just brushing over them with my paintbrush. Now it's time to go in with the eraser and finish everything off, neaten up the edges, add the highlights and just add any texture where I need to. So let's carry on with the flower and I want to start off by creating the edges of the flower petals. And what's very good about this one here is that there's already a bit of a highlighted strip all the way around. And I'm going with a bit of a bumpy motion to add that natural crinkly look to the edge of the flower petal and then I'm going to use the eraser to also create little veins to add even more texture to the petals and to transition the edge here into the petal a bit more so it doesn't just look like an outline and I'm also looking for all of the brightest highlights and I'm just blocking them in as well. If any area is a bit too bright or harsh you can just soften over it with the brush. Now I'm going to move on to the next petal 
the harder you press on the eraser, the brighter the highlight will be. And so I'm going to continue to do the same process throughout all of the petals. You may have little bits of eraser on your drawing now. So I like to go in with a kneaded eraser and just lightly pick up those little bits of eraser. Now I'm going to go in and add the highlight to the side and bottom of the stem and also to this stem here. Remember, if you've done a highlight too bright, you can just dust over it with the paintbrush and that will darken it up a little bit. I'm also going to brighten up the centre of this bud using my Tombow Mono Eraser. So here we have the final flower study. I really hope you guys enjoyed following along with this part and you feel more confident with the techniques that I've been going through. In the next part, we're going to be stepping it up a notch and I'm going to be going through an animal study. So I'll see you guys in the next part. Bye everybody.